Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Adam's Quest. In the last episode, we met Carol's adorable brood of colorful frogs, each of them bearing a different gene that makes them all unique. Of course, Carol would say that ballad stripes would be the most important trait. That alone ensures that he's probably going to be the one to take on the bluebird feathers. It means that Adam is watching over him, and it makes him the most connected to his family. So typically those are the ones who end up with the bluebird feathers. That's one of the only traditions that this family refuses to ignore. I feel like a small part of her probably wishes that Sunbeam was the one who inherited the stripes too. He's so strong, and that's also very, very important to their family. For that matter, even Animeme has blessed this baby with the ram horns, so he's going to be able to keep them safe if nothing else. One of the other traditions she's going to try to instill in them early on is that they all need to stick together. They need to make their way up the stream as fast as possible so they can get to the ports quickly too. You guys seem to agree that it would be a better idea for us to leave for the jungle because we should be able to collect more food there, especially with some of our newest babies and their absolutely incredible collecting skills. So if Carol's side of the family doesn't want to get left behind, they're going to have to move quickly. And that will be a little bit difficult with those big frog toes of theirs. But luckily their little brother, the youngest one, Chorus, who was just born, was also the only baby who did not inherit the frog toes. So Chorus is going to be like the quick scout, I guess. He can go ahead into the darkness and hopefully see if there's any danger out there waiting for them. I suppose there's the chance that they could stumble into a wandering Baragina and keeping Ballad safe is the most important thing to the brothers. So since Carol is currently telling them all of these stories and traditions, I feel like now would actually be the best time for her to pass on the bluebird feather. I know that he's still young, I know that Carol still has a few days left on her lifespan, but I guess, just like the other side of the family, we're giving her the chance to see her little baby shine. She can lead him in the right direction, which I know is going to be toward that nest, that nest was actually what kind of led her toward their father, so she knows it's important. She knows it's the right way for them to go. Let's have her scoot on up here so she can pick up the grass. Oh, somebody got a leech? Hopefully it was, yeah, sunshine over here, okay. She has a toxic body, so she wasn't affected, but that does mean that we missed out on the food. It's only one piece, so I guess it doesn't matter so much. But since we are so, so close to the end of our supplies, I mean, every little bit counts at this point, and Guava would know that best. Let's have him pick up some of these coconuts too, so maybe they can offer it up to the babies, because I don't think that Mulberry is going to be going anywhere. He's a little bit too stuck in his ways. He would prefer to just stay here with all of his bug swarms and his coconuts, and his sick son too. We'll have to have him come over here to purr for guava, but for now, let's start moving the babies a little bit closer to their goal. We do have Chorus to watch out for. The bluebird is gone, so he shouldn't get swept away. But since the side of the family does favor Adam's ways, I think that Ballad is going to stay next to his little brother. Sunbeam is going to be the hardest at moving since he doesn't have a running leg. We might actually want to bring him up the stream. I mean, there are some areas here that are kind of rough. He might end up taking some drowning damage. But we have so many person out creatures on the other side of the island. I think he'll probably be okay. So let's scoot him to the water side. And then... Oh. Maybe we should have him cut down the berry bushes. Yeah, he's strong enough to do so. I mean, I know they won't grow back, but we're leaving here anyways. I think that would actually give us more food. If I remember correctly, these give us about five pieces of food every time we chop them down. So that would be so much more than what Ballad could give us. Yeah, that might be a good idea. I mean, you can go ahead and pick your one single berry, then scoot on over to the other side of your brother. But I think Sunbeam the Tank is going to be the one who gives you most of your feasts. Now let's go over here to make sure that Sunshine is making her way down the shore. The hope is that we'll eventually stumble into one of those roots. Though, to be honest, I am starting to lose hope a little bit. 
It seems like the roots are just not spawning on this island, so I'm not sure if she's ever going to complete her mission. We'll have her go as far as she can, but we will have to make sure that she doesn't settle underneath any of these coconut trees. Still sniffing along the entire way, though it looks like all she can really smell are the berry bushes, and that's not going to do her much good with those two digging paws. Well, maybe they'll find a little crabbit buddy to wander around with. I suppose at this point, companionship is the only thing they're looking forward to. Now, I do believe that we were just about to start some more families over on this side of the island. Oh, and do I see a shell over here? Oh, Rai, if you could scoop this up, you could actually bring it straight back to Dukta. Shells are actually super, super rare on this island, so I suppose that would be seen as a gift of great importance. It would be an excellent way to show that you're interested at least, or paying the favor for all of those flowers before. So let's go ahead and set up their mutation menus for some healthy babies. She does have the toxic body and her inactive traits, so maybe we should focus on something like the ram horns. Oh, and that eyesight too. Yeah, we definitely don't want their babies inheriting these short-sighted eyes. So let's go ahead and place the normal eyes into its first slot, and then we'll work on those ram horns. I wonder if we should just stuff their mutation menu, or rise rather, with the ram horns too. I mean, I know she has the antlers in her inactive traits, but we need that extra boost of attack if we want to survive. As it stands right now, most of these creatures can't actually attack at all. Unfortunately, the toxic body and the lean body too are a little bit weaker than some of the other genes, and since we are settling them down right in the middle of Perigina territory, it would probably be a good idea to ensure that they can at least defend themselves a little bit. So go ahead and breed with Rai. Hopefully, there we go. Just enough time that he could even move away. Though I suppose with the Tangerine watching from the sidelines, making sure that her family is healthy, it actually wouldn't be that bad if one of them ended up getting sick. She could always come over and heal them after all, and then Dukta can still spend time with his kids. She is here to help, and that's one thing that she has always made very, very clear. Though I wonder if maybe we should have moved her away from the coconut tree. I did notice that poor, poor Koiz has unfortunately gotten hit in the head by another coconut. Luckily, we have Percy to swoop in and save the day once again. He can purr for her to take off the extra damage, and to teach his newest baby Clementine how to purr too. She's also going to make for an excellent healer. I suppose she could even toddle her way out of the nest? With that big stinky tail of hers? Maybe that'll be enough to deter these bugs? I really hope they're not going to give our creatures a sleeping sickness. I feel like Percy's probably going to stay with Koyce anyways, simply because she needs so much help. He probably figures that the least he could do is watch after Rara's daughter. But he will have to figure out a way to push his daughters down the shore, because he wants to make sure that they have a very bright and happy future too. They're going to make a wonderful addition in the jungle. Maybe he could even tell them about the healing fruits. I'm sure he would see those visions from his ancestors. None of these creatures have actually seen the healing fruits before, right? I think everybody who was on the previous island has passed away by now, so it's all up to little Percy to keep those stories alive, and to make sure that his healing babies are going to be suited for the job. Now, as for Rosethorn, we want her to have her baby too, so let's go ahead and do the same thing for her and just fill her mutation menu with the ram horns. Hopefully that'll make her babies super strong too. She actually has the bear Yina claws, so I guess there's a pretty good chance of that anyways. But go ahead and breed with the Duke Dam, and then we need to move you. Nutanu has overstayed his welcome in this nest, but I'm pretty sure that Catmint smelled some more of the poison berries off in the distance. So go ahead and fill your pockets with these, and then we can have you scoot on ahead, and hopefully you guys will be able to find a better place to pick your food. Oh! Oh my gosh, there are tons of berries up here! Oh, Catman, you just found the perfect feast for Nutanu. Yeah, he is going to love that. He is going to be feasting for days. We'll bring a rose thorn over to this nest. She can pick up some of the grass so her babies have more room to play. And then I believe that should be the end of our turn. 
So let's go back to the side of the family and we'll see what these two little babies of Dukta are going to look like. Hopefully with those toxic bodies, of course. It looks like this one back here has the lean body, but she does have that Baragina claw that we were hoping for. It's a little bit unfortunate that nobody inherited the ram horns. In fact, this baby, Anna Koi, doesn't have it in her genes at all. That's kind of cute that Ryan named her Anna Koi. Almost like she's naming her after her sister. Her long lost sister who's still stuck over here by her coconut trees. I wonder if that's going to shape this little blue baby to be a little bit more timid. Maybe she would take after her sister in that way. But she does look gorgeous. I mean, honestly, she looks a lot like Carol back here. She's just missing the stripes. I wonder what she would think of that if she saw this baby. I mean, it's pretty clear that those two are related. We'll keep that name though because I do like the idea of keeping Adam's old names in this line. So Anna Koi it is. You are super, super cute. And then this baby almost looks like her grandmother, right? Her grandmother would have been Foxtrot. Yeah, they look so similar. Oh, she is missing the stinky tail. And she doesn't have the big ears that Foxtrot had, of course. But the coloring is the same. And they both do have that giant Baryina claw. So at the very least, she should be able to keep her tribe safe if they do find any more Baryinas out here. If she only had the stinky tail, I feel like Foxtail would be a good name for her. But I think we're going to save that for a different baby because that beaver tail is not exactly screaming fox to me. We'll call her Rosemary instead. Kind of going off of the plant theme just like her mother while still keeping in line with the rest of their family. Now the question is, would it be a good idea for them to have a couple more babies? That way we can choose which ones would be the best ones to go to the next island. I don't know, like I feel like there's some pretty good potential for excellent jungle babies between these pairs. And I know that they're all going to raise these babies as like a little community anyway, so it might be nice to have some more tiny paws skittering around the nests. It's just a matter of making sure that Dukta doesn't get like everybody sick. And in fact, it might be time for your mother to scoot on over here and purr for you again, because you look like you're getting a little bit hurt. It's too bad that he is probably not going to last long enough to go to the jungle. We know that there are so many healing fruits there, which is probably exactly what Percy is telling to Clementine right now. It looks like unfortunately he did succumb to the sleeping sickness. Maybe that's because he knows he is going to stay behind. He knows that Kois really needs his help. So we'll bring him down here. As the piranha come up to greet him. Oh my goodness, you have tons of fish all around you. Well, Clementine will go ahead and tidy up the nest. We can take those old nurseries with us. As Passion gets her first look at the world around her. I know she is going to be a super fiery little kid. Some of you mentioned that she looks like she could be the female Adam, which is definitely true. She is technically part of this royal line because she was Ra Ra's kid, but I don't think that Percy really considers them to be like Rai's level of royal. Does that make sense? His family is considered to be both grave diggers and healers, so that's kind of what he expects from Passion. But just looking at her, I can tell that she's not going to take anybody else's ideas of what she should do. She is going to run her own course. So let's see if we can bring Nutanu up here to pick some of the poison berries. Actually, if we scoot little Catmint to the side, then hopefully he'll still be able to make his way between these two berry bushes. Yeah, you can just scoop up every last one of the berries here. And you know, since he knows that Catmint loves the berries so much, maybe he would try to teach her how to pick from them. But unfortunately, with her big Baryina claw, she's going to be a little bit clumsier than he anticipated. She would probably only end up destroying the bushes, just like Sunbeam on the other side of the stream. And I know that would be super, super embarrassing to her. No matter how much food she's putting in our pockets right now, she knows that that berry bush is beyond saving. Her talents definitely do not include picking berries, and that she knows for sure now. She'll have to stick to just protecting her tribe mates 
and hopefully clearing out a little bit more of this grass in the process. So yeah, maybe we should consider having just one more BB. I mean, we're right at the ports too. So if we scoot Rai over here, have Duke to breed with her, she can maybe wait for her BB to move out of the nest. That might be a better idea. That way our population won't surge quite so quickly. We'll do the same for Rosethorn too. Come on over here and Dukta can hopefully breed with you. There we go. Then you can scoot to this side and just pick up the grasses for us. Now let's see if Sunbeam can find some more of those poison berries. I wonder if he would be able to if he hops along the stream. Though I think there's actually some more right here. Yeah, we have a ton of berry bushes over here for you to just slice down. So go ahead and get this one for us. And maybe that would be a good opening for him to start clawing his way up the waterfalls. Now Chorus is awake too. Alright, let's bring Ballad up here. He can start nosing his way into the darkness. That way Chorus can settle down next to his mother and spend a little bit of time with her before she ends up getting too old to go on the journey. I guess she could come back here too, just to pick up the nest. Though to be honest, Nesting material is probably the last thing that we need to worry about. Let's see if Ballad can find his mother's path. We know that it was right along the stream, so I'm almost positive that it was right about here. This was where she did most of her meditating. So if he needs to kind of think about which direction he's going to go in next, that would probably be a good place to do so. It looks like Mulberry might be out of coconuts at this point, so let's have him come on up here and purr for a sun. I feel like he would actually leave this nest too. Like I know it's really worn down and old, it's very very withered, but it was the last thing that his mate touched, the last thing that she built with her own two paws. I feel like he would want it around just for sentimental reasons. So we'll scoot him on back here so he doesn't get sick, but otherwise that is going to remain where it is. Just something for them to remember a little lullaby because I'm sure they still miss her dearly. Mulberry should be glad to see these little frogs hopping away too. Now the curse will hopefully go with them. I feel like that was also a pretty big reason as to why he's not going to go with them. He doesn't want to follow this bluebird curse. He would rather just stay here with the sun. Now last but not least, let's see if you guys found any roots. Nope, it looks like nothing spawned overnight. So, Lychee, you're going to have to guide Little Sunshine around the coconut tray so she doesn't end up getting hurt. You did stumble your way directly into one of these shells. You don't exactly have the nimble fingers to pick it up. Wait a second. Is this a normal berry bush? Oh my gosh! You guys actually found a normal berry bush in the swamps? Oh, if only one of our other creatures was over here. If only Mulberry had followed you, actually. That would make for an excellent snack for him. I don't think he's going to, though. He's so far away. He is getting pretty old. He would rather just stay here where his mate passed. Oh, what a waste. Of course our creatures who can't pick the berries would be the ones to find it. Well, maybe it's a sign of good fortune in your future. It's gotta mean that Fiancare is watching out for you at least. Our god of the harvest has given you a wonderful, wonderful gift. Now if only he could settle down some more roots for us, so we could dig those up to finally lay your parents to rest. We should be all out of turns again though, so let's go ahead and skip the day. We'll come back here just to make sure that nothing is going to spawn in Baryina territory because this is always the biggest concern. Is everybody safe? Looks like nothing spawned overnight. Okay, we should be good then. We can shuffle around these babies and set up for the next ones. If those leeches don't get to us first. Hopefully it was just sunshine again. They are super close to the water. Oh, it's actually Percy. Oh, just in time. Kois has just woken up too. So you can go ahead and pick that off of Percy. Okay, this time it was you guys. This time it was probably Lychee. Well, there's not much that we can do about that, but we will have you guys keep scooting down the path. 
into yet more of those poison berry bushes, but unfortunately no roots. Yeah, I'm starting to think that they might have to give their mission to somebody else, pass it on to somebody who's moving on to the next island, because it really doesn't seem like they're going to be able to find a place to bury their ancestors. Sunshine herself only has two days remaining. Oh, she is so close to... She is so close to getting to our other family. Well, she's going to have to press that hope into Lychee's paws. Hopefully Lychee can find somebody to carry her remains. So Rai is all set up, and now it's just a matter of scooting Rosethorn into the nest too. I suppose we could have a Rosemary park herself right next to her grandmother and her father. I'm sure she would enjoy getting to know the family. We do have so many thorns around here too. I wish somebody was brave enough to swipe them down. You know, Rose Thorn might actually be the one. It's not as if we don't have plenty of purse nuts over here to heal her. So maybe she'll try to widen these pathways. That way, Nutanu can still make his way back after he's had his fill of all of these poison berries. Let's have Catmint explore a little bit more around here. Now that she knows that berry picking isn't really for her, she can start making her way deeper into the darkness, finding some more berry bushes to replace the ones she lost, and clearing out the grasses so hopefully nothing will surprise them. Tangerine is probably just so, so happy to spend some time with her very first grandchildren that she would love to come over here to pick up some more coconuts for them. Go ahead and knock some more down. We'll have Dukedom make his way over here, I suppose. That way he won't be too close. He can watch from behind the wall of thorns, I guess, picking up the grasses so his babies can play. And now it might actually be time for Passion and Clementine to make their way down the shores, thinking of those healing fruits, of course, and all of the coconuts that they can pick up for their tribe mates. There is no better way to get on the tribe's good side than by giving them food. That is a royal order from Nutanu himself. Oh, and Passion. Oh, I just realized I put you right next to Dukta. You might end up getting a little bit sick, but for some reason, I feel like that's very fitting of her. She is a very fiery, impulsive child, so she wouldn't even think twice sitting next to somebody so sick. She's just happy to be here. And you know what, Koyas? I think I am actually going to move you out of harm's way. We're going to put you right over here, so you'll have more coconuts to pick up on the next turn. And then maybe we'll try the method of knocking down the coconuts and then scooting back so we don't end up getting hit overnight. I mean, I feel like she has just been hit on the head by far, far too many coconuts in her lifetime. She needs a little bit of a break from that. Now our little frogs. Let's see if we can bring you closer to your goal. Ballad has his very final gem, so you guys must be very excited to follow him into the darkness. It looks like things are still safe. But I suppose we could bring Sunbeam over this way. Yeah, at least if he walks through the stream, he should be able to move two tiles. Though this one really has me concerned. Yeah, let's wait until the next turn when you have your next gem. Just go ahead and swipe up that berry bush for now. Oh my gosh, I just realized how chubby Ballad looks with that toxic body and the frog legs, I guess. Does he not look massive? Oh, it must be all of those poison berries that Sunbeam is feeding him. He is going to be a very, very healthy little frog. Well, we don't want you leaving Chorus behind, I think Carol would probably nudge him forward. She knows that he's going to make an excellent scout, so if we scoot him on up here, he should be able to sniff around for us and let Ballad know that everything is safe. You know, Ballad is actually better at smelling with his big nose. So it's probably pretty funny to him that his little brother is so eager to tell him where to go. But he is willing to play along. And look at that, he found the nest. So I guess for now, we'll have you go ahead and clear out the grass over here. And you guys can just meditate by the stream just like your mother did before. I think she might have another berry bush back here to pick from. So you know, I think she's actually going to stay here. We'll pick up those last two berries with her final turn. And she can rest easy knowing that her little froggy sons are going to have a wonderful life together. She has taught them very well. Interesting too that all of Mulberry's bugs seem to have disappeared. 
I wonder if he's feeling a little bit lighter then, now that the curse is going away. Well, let's have Guava at least pick up his coconuts. Then I suppose we might as well move you down here to do the same. Oh, wait a second. Oh, your nest. Your nest disappeared. I guess it got too old, Mulberry. Well, that's not going to make him very happy. Do you think maybe that's what's making him feel lighter? That this thing chaining him to his past is finally gone? I don't know, I guess we'll have to see if the bugs come back on the next turn. But one more time, let's skip the day and see what our next little babies are going to look like. Oh, two sons this time. And look at this. Both of these babies were actually blue. Ooh, that's an interesting sign from Adam. Or our bluebirds, even. One of you had the best idea, by the way, as far as what we should name these two tribes. This side of the family over here, who are so concerned with their bird genes and their wings, who want to find a way to go into the sky and fight the bluebird themselves, we're going to call these babies the Sky Seekers. Then the part of the family who favors Adam's traditions will be known as Adam's Pride. I love that name for them. It sounds like just regal enough, you know? They're a pretty regal and sometimes strict family, so I feel like it works for them very, very well. I believe it was the Potion Witch who suggested those names, so thank you very much for contributing to our tribe's lore. Now this little baby's name is New Dukir, so we'll keep that too. Should we change the colors of their gems? I guess this side of the family should probably be orange, right? Even though Rai herself doesn't have the bluebird feathers. And then this over here? These guys should have the pink gem right in the middle, just like their mother Rose Thorn. And as for you, little one, with your green toxic body, he could actually pick up the poison berries too. Thank goodness we have another baby with those lovely nimble fingers. Was New Duke here the only one who inherited the ram horns? It looks as if he might be. The crown of ram horns to connect him to the goddess of war. Or perhaps to mark him as the prince of this litter. Maybe he would be the most likely to go with us to the next island, while his siblings stay behind to pick their berries. Well, as far as this baby goes, I think we're going to name him Monk's Hood. I'm pretty sure that that's a name of a poisonous plant, so it actually kind of fits this baby with his toxic body and all. So I guess in the next episode, we should probably be seeing our little frogs hop over to the other side of the island. We might be able to set them up on the ports if we're lucky, and if those frog toes don't slow them down too much. With Catmint and Nutanu so close by to the stream, I guess they're going to be the ones who greet our little frogs. As soon as they make their way up to the tippity top of this hill, that's when they're going to cross paths. And both of these creatures are carrying each half of the bluebird feathers as well, so they're going to know exactly who they've discovered. I wonder if that feud might be starting to simmer down a little bit. It's been so long since these families have crossed paths, but their traditions are still wildly different so it'll take somebody truly open-minded to finally bring them together again. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!